Welcome. We are in uh, chapter initialization, a new chapter here, and we're working on the puzzle Initialize Your Expert. This is in the Learn to Code 2. Make sure you've watched the introduction and you've learned uh, something about what it means to initialize an instance of a type. And in this case, um, in this puzzle here, uh, let's take a look at this puzzle by zooming in on it here. <clears throat> so there's a couple things we can notice right away. The first is uh, there's no character. There's no character on the scene here. So we're going to have to get a character to work with. Um, the other thing you note, um, this puzzle doesn't look like it will be too challenging here. Um, it looks like we need to collect three gems. Okay. And our character is going to start here in this arrow. Uh, it's going to start right here up on the top platform on the arrow. And uh, what the puzzle says is that we need to somehow get to this gem over here, which is between these two walls. Uh, but there's a sort of a, uh, you know, a little valley <laughs> that we can't get to, a little canyon we can't get to. Uh, it's blocking the gem, so we can't get to it. So what we need to do is raise up a platform that's at the bottom of that little canyon so that we can walk across it and go grab that gem. And it turns out that to do that, we can uh, unlock uh, a lock over here that will raise the platform up so that we can walk across it and get to that last gem. So that's the first thing we want to do is go uh, unlock, uh, unlock the lock so that it raises the platform. So let's go ahead and uh, create a character here. And this character is going to be a new type. Okay, uh, The type is called an expert because experts have a behavior built into them that they can turn lock up, which will um, go ahead and do what we need. So a type expert is what we have here. And uh, to initialize a new uh, a constant that will hold on to our expert, instance to an instance of an expert we're going to say here in this command right here we're going to say let expert equals and then you use the type name expert and then open close parentheses okay this uh, capital expert is the type and when you say open and close parentheses that says initialize me a new instance of expert okay and i'm going to hold on to that uh, with the constant small expert. So lowercase expert. Lowercase expert will hold on to or is equal to this new instance of expert that we just made on the right hand side. That. All right. So let's run the code here and see what happens. Uh, so we run the code and hey, there's our expert. He showed up. Uh, there he is uh, in the middle of the puzzle. He's got a nice little backpack on there. He does a nice little dance. This guy is one of my favorites because as he walks around, he does this cool little hop move. Uh, so we'll see him do that. In fact, let's go ahead and make him move forward so he moves over towards this lock here uh, and see what we can do. So when I tap in here, I don't see all the normal like move forward, toggle switch, collect gem, and and so on that I would normally see. Um, and that's because this expert uh, has, you know, a certain set of behaviors associated with him. And the way we get to those behaviors is we use something called dot notation. And dot notation is uh, just basically says if you've got a variable or a constant, you just type it out. So expert, okay, and then you put a dot after it. And when you put a dot after it, these are all the properties and behaviors that this expert knows about, okay? And there they are. There's a lot of the ones we uh, we know about. There's collect gem. There's um, move forward. There's toggle switch. There's turn right. So turn left even and turn right. That's great. So all these things we can do by adding them after it. So I could do something like expert collect gem, for example. If I wanted to, okay. 
Uh, in this case, I want the expert to move forward, though. So if I say expert.moveForward, and if I do that three times, that's telling, it's sending the message to the expert to move forward. Okay, so expert.moveForward. So let's do that three times, and that'll take us down the stairs and over right in front of the lock. Now at this point here, we're going to use our expert functionalities, so our expert behavior. If we say expert dot, look at this first one down here. It says turn lock up. Okay, uh, that hopefully is the behavior that this expert has that other characters don't have, which will allow us to raise the platform in front of that gem. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, have the expert turn the lock up. Now, let's run this code and watch what happens. Okay, our expert is born. There's his nice little dance move he does. He moves forward three, and he gets his tools out of his backpack, and he picks the lock, and notice that the platform has now been raised. So now this gem here in this valley is accessible to us, and that makes the puzzle quite a bit easier. All right? Quite a bit easier. So now, uh, from this point on, we should think about uh, our, again, as usual, any patterns that might repeat here. And uh, I see uh, something, at least, that I know we're going to want to do. One thing we're going to want to do is we moved, to get to this, to get to each one of these gems, we're going to need to walk up to the top of this platform and then say turn left and come get this gem right in front of us here. And as we walk up, it's three, uh, three move forwards, one, two, three, to get to the top. Then it's a turn left. Then it's a one, two, three, to get to the gem. Okay, so it might make sense for us to write a function here called move three. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our function that will do that. And I'm going to do that up here before I move forward. <clears throat> I generally like to write my functions at the top of my uh, programs so that um, anywhere down below can access that function. Because if you write it below where you're trying to access it, then your program won't know about it yet. So defining them at the top is a, generally a good way uh, to go. So func, we said move three. Okay, in fact, yeah, move three. All right. Now, in here, I want to uh, just move forward three times. Uh, but again, uh, there is no move forward command, right? Because uh, the only way we can move forward is by uh, telling our expert to move forward, our character expert to move forward. So let's try that. Expert dot move forward expert dot move forward and expert dot move forward okay good uh, at this point now um, really this function name called move three is a little bit misleading because it's not going to move anybody three it's only going to move the expert three so just to be certain I'm clear about what's happening here I'm going to change the name of this to be expert move three because that's really all it does is move the expert three forward okay all right now um, that's good so we probably also want a function to turn the expert around because look he's right now he's facing this lock and can't do much useful there so let's add that as well and similarly here we're gonna probably have to call this expert turn around because we won't be turning around anything else. We're just turning around the expert here. And we can say expert.turn right or expert and add another expert.turn right. Okay, there we go. So now we've got two ideas, expert move three and expert turn around. And maybe right after we fix this lock here, let's go ahead and have the expert turn around.
there, expert turnaround. And I'm going to test out that code to make sure it works and we'll get our expert uh, ready to go solve the puzzle at this point. So he's going to move three, move forward three. Okay, good. And he's turning himself around. Great. Okay, so he's all set to go. Um, one thing I noticed by adding our function expert move three, we don't, we can, you know, replace this, these three move forwards with our one call to our function here. So I should do that as well. As long as we've written this abstract idea of our expert moving three, we should just go ahead and use it here. So expert move three. There we go. That simplifies our code quite a bit. So uh, just these three commands now, expert move three, expert dot turn lock up, and expert turn around. We've got our lock uh, up and we're ready to tackle the rest of this, uh, the rest of this puzzle. So we said here to get a game plan, what's nice is there's a lot of symmetry in this puzzle. So if we were to go ahead and follow this path where we move up to the uh, top of the platform, then we turn left, and then we come down to this gem here, and we collect this gem, then if we were to turn around, we would be all set to do the very same procedure again. We could walk forward three, turn left, walk forward three, collect the gem, turn around. Then we'd be right here. And then we could do it again. We could walk forward three, one, two, three. We could turn left. We could walk forward three. We could collect this gem, and we could turn around. And at that point, we'd have all three gems, and we're done. So we like to do something three times, this abstract idea of taking care of, um, you know, taking care of one gem, for example. So we're going to have a for loop in here at this point that says something like for i in one to three. We just have to do something three times. And that abstract idea, we haven't written this yet. But that abstract idea might be something like, go get gem. <laughs> something really simple like that. Go get gem. Where go get gem is really just going to be walk forward three, turn left, walk forward three, collect the gem, turn around. See? Okay. So let's write that function now. Function go get gem. Okay, go get gem. And go get gem, we said uh, we want the expert to walk forward three. So that's simply just saying expert move three. We would like to turn left. So I can say expert dot turn left. And we would like the expert to move three again. Expert move three. And finally, we want the expert to collect the gem dot expert dot collect gem and let's get the expert then to turn around so he's ready to do it again expert turn around all right let's just test this well we can run the code right now and uh, see if it works let's see if it works okay uh, run the code okay our expert is born using our initialization Expert move three is called. He gets out his tools, raises the platform. Expert dot expert turn around. Okay, now he's executing the first iteration of go get gem. Grabs the gem, turns around. Now he's executing the second iteration of go get gem. Turn left. Expert move three, expert collect gem, expert turn around, and expert move three, expert turn left, expert move three, expert collect gem, expert turn around. He's got them. Okay. All right. So after we created our expert up here, 
just to remind you to create an expert we can and uh, we can you know use a constant to hold on to that expert we can say let expert equals and then capital expert which is the type name the type name followed by an open close parenthesis okay and then from then on it was just a matter of making some functions and recognizing that our expert was going to need to move forward three a lot so it made sense to say expert move three make a function expert move three which did just that it said expert dot move forward expert dot move forward expert dot move forward and in then we could use that along with our expert turnaround function to create a um, a method called go get gem which basically took care of one third of the puzzle each time uh, recognizing that if we do the same thing three times go forward three turn left go forward three get the gem turn around we'll be done with this puzzle okay all right so I have a little more to say on this um, but I think this is going to wait until the next video and what what bothers me about this code is there are a couple different ways we're doing things here and they seem really awkward and inconsistent for example here this says expert dot turn left so that's telling our expert to go ahead and turn three then we made this function expert move three it bothers me that this is a different syntax than above uh, and again below here it says expert dot collect gem this is really the kind of syntax we would like instead of expert turn around we might want this to say expert dot turn around or up here expert dot move three um, but this is going to require us learning a uh, a new feature of Swift called an extension and I'm going to actually record another video so if you're tired of looking through this solution right now I'll ask you to um, you know maybe tomorrow go take a look at this uh, next video it's going to still be called initializing your expert but I'm going to call it bonus material something like that I'm going to show you how to refactor rewrite this code um, using this powerful uh, Swift feature called an extension and uh, I think you're really gonna like it and you're gonna really um, sort of instantly see wow uh, there's a lot I could do with this okay so but for now uh, that's enough and uh, we'll see you next time